For all that has been, let us thank the Lord. Amen. Woo! Let go, right? That's what it feels like. To release, to move past, to move into. Now, I know that we still have a little bit of time left, and I also know importantly that even though we drop a rock into the water of God's blessing it doesn't mean everything is gone we're still on this journey and I don't know about you but I'm excited for 2018 if for no other reason that in some point during this year I may get to sleep all the way through the night (laughs) I don't know about your 2018 but ours looks beautiful exciting I mean we have Our two-year-old, who is the boss. We have our two-month-old, who is the even bigger boss in a way she doesn't even know yet. We have so many chances to share love and to grow in faith with our beloved church here. We have so many chances for us to grow with our friends and our family. We have so many ways to get excited for a new way. As you look out on 2018, what's coming? What do you know about? What is there? I know that some of you are expecting grandchildren. I know that some of you are expecting twin grandchildren. Not too quickly here. I know that many of you are ready for this year because you feel like it's a new start. I know that some of you are leaving behind hard memories from different places. Perhaps those hard memories are from hospital rooms or hospice houses. Perhaps those hard memories are from doctor's offices. Perhaps those hard memories are from other places that we call church. Perhaps those hard memories are from work. Or perhaps those hard memories are from home, even closer. So we move into the new year, what's coming? You know, we can't really see it, right? There's a fog surrounding the coming months. I know that as I move into the new year, there's not only excitement, but there's a whole lot of anxiety, too. I don't know what's up. I don't know what's going to come next. I don't know what news alert will hit my phone or what tweet will come out. I have no idea. You know, it's always best when you don't know what's coming next to take your next step with some kind of confidence. You know, I've always heard that first impressions are the most important. When I was in fourth grade, I went on my very first date. I went on a date with a girl named Emily Turner, and I don't remember anything about Emily Turner except she had a somewhat big nose. We went to see Casper the Ghost in theaters which is a fourth grade date, my friends. And we got the pleasure of being taken on our date together by my mom. It was fourth grade. Now we took my best friend Danny with us because I was scared to go on a first date. And the whole way into the theater, Danny kept saying to me over and over and over and over and over again, got to make a good first impression, got to make a good first impression, got to make a good first, this could be the woman you marry All I remember really saying to Danny was, shut up, Danny. We got into the theater, and the theater was totally packed. All of the fourth graders in South Overland Park were taking their dates to see Casper the Ghost that day. Every seat was taken except for three seats. And there were four of us. So I did the most important thing first. I gave my mom a seat. And then I did the second most important thing. I gave myself a seat. (laughs) And then I turned to Emily and Danny and I said, which one of you wants to sit here? 
You can ask my wife. I've always been very romantic. Luckily, Emily sat down, and Danny sat in the aisle of the theater to watch Casper the Ghost. And as we walked out of the theater after the movie was over, I turned to Danny and I said, what did you think of my first impression? He said, I think Emily's probably impressed, but I don't know if I want to be your friend anymore. (laughs) First impressions are important. As we blush onto a new year, I would imagine you might know two things. The first, I might imagine that you know what you need to walk into this year with. You might know that. You might know that you want to walk into this new year looking over this past year. You might know that you want to walk into the new year and you want to take with you a little bit of courage. Because there were things last year that you wanted to say or to do and you don't feel like you had the courage to do them. You might look into this new year and you might need to take with you one simple word, no. You might need to take the word no with you because you said yes to absolutely everything else. You might need to take with you into this year a certain sense of humor because everything last year was so heavy and so serious. You want to take laughter with you into this year so that you remember every single time it gets too heavy or too rough that you need (laughs) just to take a break and remember that it's all, all joyful in many ways. Perhaps you want to take with you into this year a little bit of righteous anger. Maybe it's righteous anger about the world we live in. Maybe it's righteous anger about a situation with a beloved one that you don't feel is resolving, but you know that the anger you feel about it is right and good. Maybe you need to take that into the new year. So, Maybe you need to take something. And then there are those of us who have absolutely no idea what we need to take into the new year, right? As we look out, we have no clue what's coming. Instead, we have hope that something does come. As we look out, maybe you have a hope. Maybe you have a hope that in this new year, the love that you have been looking for might finally be found in your life. Maybe you have a hope in this year that your life, which is largely unchanged and unchanging and totally routine, planned out all the time, you have a hope that in this year, out of that routine, you might find the blessing of knowing that what you have is enough. You might hope for contentment. Maybe... As you look over this last year and years before it even, you might look into this year and hope that in this coming year, you might even begin to broach some semblance of being authentic to who you are, who you know yourself to be. Maybe you might look into this year and your hope, you might know yourself to be someone who builds their walls pretty high. And you might look out into this year and you might hope for a little bit of vulnerability because when you build your walls so high, you spend a lot of your time alone behind them. Maybe you need some vulnerability in this year. Or maybe, maybe you might think that you don't matter And maybe your hope for this year is to hear again a promise that you do. That you matter. That your presence with us matters. That your feelings matter. That your thoughts, your dreams, your hopes, that they matter. Maybe that's your hope. My mother has a saying. It's a superstitious one born of a small town in Kansas. But she says it this way, whatever you do on New Year's Day, you do all year long. Now, you've heard that, and you may or may not be superstitious. You may just be stitious. But as we move into tomorrow, a new day, a new dawn, 
I invite you to remember an important truth of who we are as followers of Jesus Christ. We are called to be co-creators with God. We are called to do the work of creation alongside of God. As God prepares the way for us infinitely on into the future, we are called to co-create. That means that we have a responsibility not to enter blindly or apathetically or complacently into our new year, but to take some intention into it, some hope. Now, I'm not asking you to make a resolution to give up chocolate. I'm not asking you to make a resolution to lose five pounds. I'm not asking you to make a resolution to be kinder to the people you love, although that may come from this. I'm asking you to make an intention. Because we only co-create by having an idea of where we're going. That's what the blessing of that Ecclesiastes song is. A chance. A time. A remembrance. That a new and a new and a new, there is a time and a time and a time and a time again for something different. Because God is constantly creating alongside us. That's hopeful, my friends. That's hopeful. So, in your bulletins, on the right side, you've got 2018 and you've got 12 months. Now, you may have no idea what comes in those 12 months, but you may have a hope or an intention. You can use that side either right now or later if you want to think through what's coming. To give thanks for it. To be hopeful in it. To be scared of it is okay. To be unsure is okay as well. And then on the back side, it says what I need to take up. Think about those intentions, those hopes, those dreams. And spend some time with them. Because my friends, having an intention as we enter into the new year, that helps all of us to walk on the right side of the street. Amen.